Hello everyone, I'm going to show you how I pebble dice this patch. Um, dry dice is another word for it. Um, so, the video, I'll sort of try and give you all the instructions uh, as, as I do. Right, so you can see I have my baton nailed on and I'm just following the line of the original render here. You can see I chipped off a wee bit at the bottom there. It was a patch and I didn't want three patches on the one bit and I decided to, to hack that bit off and I whacked my thumb too. It's pretty sore. Um, so I was happy enough with the joint going down and just it was just that bit. Didn't want three patches. I would rather settle for two. And you can see previously I had my stop bead on and scratch code already done. And I will give this a good code of SBR. As you can, pardon me, you can see how the depth there. I'm going to try and bring it out just to follow the original. So I might be going out all the way on that timber, but a good bit. So you can also see that I have soaked down the wall ready. It's got a scrape and a soak down ready. Um, just trying to show you the texture here. Nice sticky sort of mix. Um, obviously needs to be sticky for the stones to adhere to um, and I have mixed it just maybe a wee bit wetter, there's lots of body on this, it's nice, nice and fluffy um, waterproofers in it as well um, and you can see this wall is I have soaked this wall down at least three times um, but it's a very warm day so I do expect it to dry quick and obviously haven't already done it. I know it dries quick and believe it or not, it was hard to get it in even such a small wee wall. So in this heat you wouldn't want to be doing anything too big. Um, the weather has been good here. So I've given it another wet just before I go ahead and start coating. You can actually see the water shining on it. Um, my idea here is I'm going to coat flush to my bead on the left and just try and just slightly stay under the PVC at the top to allow the water to run off. Um, but th this will be part one. There's another part two of another way of dry dashing. Um, well, another way I do it um, actually is easier than this way. This way you have, to, you have to be a bit more ready. You have to have your stones. Well, both ways you should always have your stones and your water and your mix all ready. Um, but the other way gives you a bit more time, in my opinion. Um, but you'll have to wait for part two for that. So, you can see it just started here. Um, and I have a mix right beside me here in the mixer. It's fresh. And I'm just keeping it in the mixer. I don't want to put it on a spat board or anything. Um, if you were going to use a spat board or a mortar board, you would want to have it absolutely clean almost a new piece of timber um, as this is a white background not that it, it doesn't matter so much for me because I, I try to dirty down my stones later on just to just to discolor the whiteness slightly as you know this would have been the way these houses looked originally but over time the, the, the color fades slightly and becomes more stained so, but I still don't want any streaks or anything in it, so I'm just keeping it in the mixer to keep it all in one colour. So, as I showed you earlier, I'm using my good skim and trowel. It's actually my refiner stainless steel. Um, and the reason for that is, is because the less lines you leave, the nicer of a dash you will get. So... As normal, I always sort of work from the top and work my way down. And the top should dry out quicker than the bottom. Um, I've, I spoke about this in previous videos, as the water will migrate down the wall. And will sort of always sort of sit around the bottom. So my idea is to get the top done quick as possible. Get the stones on it and then keep on coating the joints in. So I have all my stones ready in buckets here as well. You 
you can see just trying to keep it neat as possible especially at the joint um, the thing that dried the most on this was around the bead as it was actually a tighter coat than the joint that left on the joint um, so that and the top the very very top as the stones weren't catching so great because it was underneath and I do give it a, a wee slight better touch up later on and we'll have a bit more time Sun, believe it or not, is really bouncing off this wall. Um, so just showing is putting the bags down to collect the stones again. There's also a wee drain, so don't really want them all going into the wee drain beside. As you can see, the, the downspout there. So I'll always just sort of dice to the top, work my way down. You can see that it's not catching... The angle of the camera is sort of is looking up there, but it doesn't just catch the stones, don't just catch great at the top. Um, but I do touch it up later, and I'll maybe do a wee video if you do need to ever touch up. Um, but it would have, would have been fine like that anyway. But just looking at it, looking at it, the more you look at things, the more you'll want to maybe fix it, you know. Um, but my priority was to get the whole rest of this wall done first. Just to make sure the wall stuck. Sorry, the all stone stuck as well. So I always start my dice at the top so the stones don't knock, you know, they're not knocking each other off as they come down. And when, when if you are going to coat a section and then coat on, the, re the reason I do that, I mentioned in, in previous dashing videos is that the joint you don't want to dash up the stones right down to the joint or you will create a joint and um, keep the joint soft with, with fresher stuff and you can see that's what I'm getting straight on to now I'm going to give it a wee soak again just to just to slow things down a bit because the top had dried very quickly on me there um, so The idea is then to recoat the the joint in and get it diced. So I'm just continuing the pattern really from the top, getting the joint in, working from my left to my right again. And um, if if you were worried about a trend, you could coat this maybe a trowel length down and then just just get your stones done again halfway down onto the fresher coat and then continue. Um, you could, you know, in, in previous videos, um, people were saying that it should just coat the whole thing and then hit up stones. But seeing this heat, um, even in the winter, I would sort of coat the top half and dash, dash down a quarter of that and then coat another bit. So you're always trying to eliminate any joints and stuff. Um, or if you coat your stones, if you coat the whole thing down, you might get a lot of wee baldies, um, a lot of wee patches, wee smooth patches. Um, so I'm just always trying to avoid that by keeping keeping what's on the wall fresh. So yeah, we're just run the trailers. What I'm saying, I'm gonna dash along that. Just gonna again put my bags down, pull the stones out of the bags, put them down. Always move the bags when you're coating again, so that the stuff doesn't fall onto them. I actually using my ox Dyson trowel for this one use that on a, another a bigger job much much bigger job of dry dash as well um, but I tend to find believe it or not the smaller Dyson jobs can be more difficult than the larger ones at times and um, especially if lots of wee nooks and crannies you're working around would slow you down um, and the legs of that bead where it will dry a bit quicker and a joint and obviously the very top of the wall where it will dry dry that bit quicker and um, you can just give it all a wee splash um, you, you just, if you were doing a wee patch you just could follow suit and just keep splashing before you just coat and coat again it will just keep everything fresh 
Um, but by this stage here, I'm under little to no pressure anymore as I'm off the top, so I'm not getting up and down off the crates or ladders. So ground level is always easier to work on, as you all well know. So just just that as it was top, just try and keep your, your coat nice and tidy. And then the stones will look nice and neat when they're put on as well. They'll follow suit. Um, I have actually forgot to mention I did actually put a wee lick along the bottom, along my button, just to build it out. I've already done that. So I should have mentioned that earlier on, um, just as a wee test, but I put a wee lick along the bottom just to bring the bell cast out to the bottom sun. So it gives me less work to do later on here. Obviously, the, the more you add your background, the more time you're going to give yourself, but you don't want it slay neither. Um, maybe something to think about in the winter. Um, you don't want sliding or anything when you are hitting with the stones, as they will add a bit of weight. Um, I'm going to get into a wee bit, bit of the tactical technical details here and um, we'll talk a wee bit about the mix um, what about my mix you, you know mix it whatever way um, that you feel best using um, and I'm going to talk about the depth of your coat as well um, so I'll talk about the mix first um, so my mix here is just typically it's 4 to 1 my scratch coat beforehand was 3 to 1 and you can see that there's more sand in this mix than there is in the previous mix. Um, and if you go the same, it might stay on, but chances are it could blow off. So you, you obviously don't want it coming off when you're going to do all the work of putting it on. Um, but again, do, do the mix, everything to what you're comfortable using and confident using. And of course, if it works for you, why change it? You know, unless it's going to be easier, and um, you might want to have a go at trying a different method if it's easier. Um, but again, you can see I'm actually hitting the joint here first as well, um, and I have a good bit of clean up to do here after this job. Um, but yeah, so and your depth of render that you want to be coating for the stones, you do want to be, you know. You have to judge what size your stone is. So your coat will depend on basically the size of your stone. Um, your coat shouldn't be any thicker than the stone itself. So keep keep that in mind as well. And I'll obviously if you go too thin, you know your coat will dry out as well. But you know, bear in mind if you're using bigger stones, you will need a bigger coat. Um, so. I think that's most of the technical stuff out um, in my mix as well. I actually put a wee drop of SBR in my mix and waterproofers. Um, you shouldn't actually use, um, for a colour coat system, you shouldn't use motor mix. Um, although for this, because this is older, I've put a splash in. I'm not too concerned about its stain, as like I said. You can see my stones are quite dirty. I've put a wee tiny bit of sand through my stones just to dirty them up a bit and help dirty the background slightly. Um, although uh, the clip at the start is the day after and the sun, you know, bouncing off it, you can tell it's a fresher coat. But again, you might do a wee update video and show it in a couple of years' time. Um, you know, get back and have a look and show you it in a couple of years' time and you know see hearts came in age ways um, but I've done a, a very similar job believe it or not in the same area and I think I did it like 11 years ago and it still stands today um, but again you know that's people say four to one's too strong but you know 11 years later um, 10 11 years later and it's still you know the exact same type of patch and it still stands so that does prove that four to one isn't too strong 
and it also isn't too weak. But um, so that's that's the job completed. Um, Trying to get a close up of the joint. Um, that that area there just tussled it in. So the joints are the important thing, and I've touched the top up a wee bit more, and need to get that cleaned. Um, and obviously, a clean job is a good job. And you clean the door, but you can sort of see that the stones are a wee bit dirtier than normal. And that was me attempting to stain it down, but I said I didn't want it too bright, um, because it would stand out even more. So you can see that the bit of sand through them there. Um. Need to clean up the door, and also there needs to be a wee bead of silicone just in that gap there. It was silicone before the bead went on, and then rendered over, and that's you know all my renders should be pretty waterproof, but I will silicone a wee bead of stuff down there just to be safe again on the safe side. And you can see the bottom and that patch came in. Like I said, I didn't want. That would have been like three patches in one area, and rather just have the two. But you can see the difference in colour, <laughs> the fresh. But hopefully in two years' time, this will be all faded in, quite like the original. Maybe a bit of cleaner stones there. And that's from this angle. But yeah, guys. Um, Still a wee bit to do on, there's a step there, and I'm going to try and do some more brick render effect underneath. So catch me on part two, guys. Brothers! What we do in life echoes in eternity.